Hello and welcome back. This week we're going to have a look at model number R52RS. Now this was just a, a variation on the Ginty in a bright crimson LMS livery. Now she was available from 1970 to 74, although she did change her model number in 73 to R452. Now we're just going to move her forward and pick up those wonderful Coronation Scott coaches, which were numbered R422 for the first class coach and R423 for the brake coach. These were available between 1983 and 96. Now we'll just take them back through points 9 the crossover onto the inside line. Nicely behaved through those points and the diamond crossing. And then gently to a stop and we'll switch the points there. And we'll take the whole lot forward of points number 11. And then we'll be able to bring them to a stop. And then we'll be able to switch points number 11. Take the whole lot back into the station. There we go. And back we go. Nice and smooth. Now she does have smoke this model. But running at this speed obviously we're never going to get any, any smoke out of the smoke unit. Beautifully to a stop at the station there. We'll just have a swift look at it in what's left of the packaging. We've got that great with smoke paper label stuck onto the, the platform packaging there. I think that's quite smart. These would look great on the shelves without with a, a cellophane wrap on. Really great way of displaying it. And it should have had one of those cardboard sleeves like the, like the uh, coronation we saw last week, but that's missing, as are the instructions. Here we've got the, the paper label applied to the end of the box. The model number R52 RS. LMS 060 tank locker with smoke. Now this model was available from 1970 to 74, but sometime in 73 she changed the model number to R452. Not quite sure the reasoning behind that. Now we'll just have a look at the model again. In 1972 she became available with plated wheels, but this is a slightly earlier one, which just has a, the more standard steel tyres. It does still have the magnesian, as the plated wheels version also had the magnesian. Let's have a quick look at the around the box. We've got Tri and Hornby's wonderful bold logo there. Let's we'll have a quick look at the other side. Excellent typography there. Made in Great Britain by Rovex Tryan. I really like to to get their name everywhere they could. I'm not quite sure what the little yellow paper labels for. Maybe the price was written there at some point, but I can't really see any evidence of it. And she seems to have a very glossy finish, although on the other side some of this gloss varnish does seem to be missing, but on this side it's pretty much intact. The Ginty in this livery didn't sell quite as well as expected, I think. It is quite a nice little thing to have though. We've got LMS applied to the side of the tank here and the running number. 7606 and it's in a yellowy gold colour with a black drop shadow, quite smart. And the detail around the smoke box door here is all picked out in black. So this, this has been sprayed onto the, the basic colour color of the body moulding, which is this wonderful colour here. And again, the roof sprayed up in black and around the edges of the coal bunker and the coal load are also sprayed in black. We'll see those quite shortly. Looking at the front end, we've got the old trying D-shaped coupling here. She does seem to have had a bit of a smash at some point. There's a little bit of a bend in it there. Metal buffer heads pushed into the, the plastic buffer beam. Again, we've just got the, the same detail really as the black Ginty we saw a couple of weeks ago. Although unlike the black Ginty, the Hornby Railways one we saw a couple of weeks ago, we've got a running number printed on the, on the, on the plate here. On the black version we saw that Hornby Railways one, it was just blank. They hadn't bothered to put a running number on. On the original Ginties, the running number was part of the mould, so I believe they must have just taken this off the mould at some point so they could produce the, the different versions of the Ginty which cropped up in, in the early 70s. And we can see here we've got the securing screw which holds the plastic body to the metal chassis. And again looking down the side of the tank here we can see that the varnish has come away quite badly along here, but the LMS transfers have, have survived very very well. It could be the effect of smoke oil on the fingers perhaps which have made the varnish disappear on this model in, in places but it's not too bad, it still has a, a great overall effect. We've got a couple of safety valves up here and those lovely shaped windows in the front of the cab. 
But unlike the Hornby Railways one we saw a couple of weeks ago, the, the moulding is a bit crisper, so this is this is probably moulded a lot earlier than the Hornby Railways one, when the mould was becoming a little bit old and worn. Just like the Black Ginty, she's got a couple of great round windows in the back of the cab there, and the edge of the coal bunker has been picked out in black, which I think is quite smart. You just see the coal load there, very, very shiny, due to the overall gloss finish of this model. We've got the, the prongs here, where the chassis pokes through the bodywork to help hold the whole thing together, along with the securing screw. Metal buffers poked into the buffer beam, and we've got the old trying D shaped coupling as ever on the back there. There we have a, a better view of the coal load there. As we said earlier, it is quite glossy. Wonderful view right the way along the top of the model here. I've just taken the body off the chassis. We've got Trian's name and the model number R52. Uh, along this edge here, we've got Made in England. You can see these metal buffers here are just pushed into the, the buffer beam. The buffer shank is part of the main part of the body moulding. And then just the, the metal heads pushed directly in. If we look further along on the inside of this model, like the black version we saw the other week, the model, the mould seems to have been altered here to accommodate the top of the smoke unit. I don't know whether this was done after the bodies were moulded or whether the tool was simply altered to, to create the space for the synchro smoke unit, but this seems a little more neat and tidy than the black version we saw the other week. So maybe the, the tool was altered or tools were altered to create this space, I'm not quite sure. Looking further along, the inside looks pretty good. It is a little oily, but that could be from use of the smoke unit over the years, because it, it does tend to seep around. And again, we can see the two holes there, where the, the chassis pokes through to help hold the whole thing together. And again, we've got the metal buffers there, just pushed straight into the plastic bodywork. So a swift look down the outside of the model here, and we can really see that 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 varnish has begun to come away over the years. Could be a result of smoke oil on fingers perhaps, or it just peels away, I'm not quite sure. But this side it has lost quite a lot of varnish compared to the other side. Let's so swift look at the other side. So that's much more intact, but you can see it's, it's beginning to go in places. But then these are quite old toys. Just a swift look at the chassis and the wheels here. We've got the, the steel tyres we can see there and the, the magnet sitting behind that rear drive wheel which provides that magnetesian effect and gives it that extra pulling power. We've got the fluted coupling rod, unflanged drive wheels on the centre there. Fairly tidy condition, the whole model and we've got the try and synchro smoke unit there. We'll just roll that over and have a look. And we can see Triang X392 built in Britain, so that would be the, the model number for that particular size of synchro smoke unit. They did come in different sizes. That great cog there sitting on top of the, the worm, which drives the, the pump there, which pumps out the smoke. That's the theory anyway. The faster it goes, the quicker the smoke pumps out. And that motor's in pretty good shape. Needs a, possibly a bit of a clean. I haven't used this model very much at all since I've got it. Again, it's in fairly tidy condition. We'll swing it around and have a look at the other side. Again, fairly nice. It is quite oily. Uh, as I say, I think the, the oil seeps out of this smoke unit around the model just over time when it's been lying in the box. We'll just have a look at the underside there. You can see the, the coupling just held onto the chassis with a single flat head screw. Again, it's got a bit of a bend in it. We've got the collection plate here, and the wipers go into each of these drive wheels. And then we've got SS on the chassis, which just indicates that smoke units could be fitted to this chassis, because of course not all models had smoke units, but they just shared the, the same chassis. Now we're just going to take this Triang Hornby Coronation, model number R864, back to the engine shed. And she was available between 1970 and 72. We'll just wait for the signals to change there. There we go. And off we go again. And we'll close those points. There we have it. And off towards the engine shed. So we've got to get onto the inside line as well. So we're going to come through that crossover. Very successful that. Quite quick we're running here. And off beyond points number 18 to a gentle stop.
then we'll switch those and we'll take her back towards the turntable. Now once we've got her in the engine shed we're going to bring out the, the slightly later Hornby Railways Coronation model number R685 which was released at the same time as these wonderful coaches we've seen just a little earlier. Nice gentle stop there then we'll rotate the turntable anti-clockwise and we'll bring out this slightly later Coronation and she's in a matte livery very striking just like the other model quite smooth running, does have a slightly rattly echo to it because she is tender drive. I think the rattly echo comes from the noise of the wheels just echoing inside that empty body there as the, as the motor's in the tender. Now just beyond points number 11 and we'll switch those and we'll take her back and pick up those Coronation Scott coaches. I think we have those and then off we go. Nice and smooth, quite powerful. And then we'll switch points number 11 behind them. We'll just have a quick look at this Hornby Railways Coronation. Now she was model number R685, available between 83 and 85. Quite a fine looking image on, on the packaging really. Pretty good for the day I think. Now it's a, just a polystyrene insert in here so we won't get that out and have a look. We'll just put the box to one side and we've got the instructions that came with it. And they're not specific to this particular model, but they do have the, the model number and the date of production theoretically stamped here. So we've got the model number there, R685, 18th of July, 84. So it just covers various maintenance issues a number of different models on this sheet, it's quite a universal thing. We've got both coronations together here, this one being the, the later Hornby Railways one in that matte spray painted finish we've got here. The lining doesn't extend past the, through the cab windows which I think is a bit of a shame here. And this is the Triang Hornby one in that very high gloss finish. The, the colour of blue appears to be slightly different between the two. We've got some obvious differences here on, on the cab roofs, the Triang Hornby one is painted up in black, whilst the Hornby Railways one is in blue, the same colour as the rest of the locomotive with, with a black hatch. The tenders look very similar, but I believe the Hornby Railways one is actually slightly smaller than the old Trying Hornby one. And it's strange being that they've, they've fitted the, the Ringfield motor inside here. And just a swift look down the other side of the, the Hornby Railways model here. It really is a fine looking thing. I think it possibly loses something not being gloss in finish. But then the, the matte paintwork there is truly superb, I think. Great looking models, both of them though. Looking at the side of the model, we can see we've got the, the wire handrail, just like the older model, but I think we have plastic ties here holding the handrail in position. The nameplate's been partially incorporated into the mould of the model, and the, the name of the locomotive has just been printed or painted inside that, which I think is quite a nice touch, instead of that foil sticky label of the older model. And we've gained a crest here as well. We've got much finer valve gear, although we do have some plastic that's been used, which is a bit of a shame, I think. And the spokes are all painted up in blue, which I think is a nice touch as well. Looking at the front ends of the models, they're very, very similar. I'm not really trying to do a comparison here, just showing how similar they are. And I believe this, this mold on, on the later one has just been tidied up a little bit, but it's probably derived from the original tool. Certainly the technology for applying this silver lining is far superior than the earlier Triang Hornby one. To me, this screw is more Triang than Hornby Railways. It's, it's very crude, although they have gone for a crosshead screw. It doesn't fully fit in. I think it's self-tapping into the weight on the inside. There is another one, which we'll see shortly. I think that could have been handled a little bit better. Again, the, the detailing in the tenders is very similar, although I believe this one has been scaled down just slightly when you put them side by side and look from above there. This tender does appear to be shorter and slightly narrower in, in, in its um, appearance. And there we've, we've got the pin which takes the current to the, the Rinfield motor there. Looking at the back of the tender here, we can see the same detailing has been carried over onto this newer Hornby Railways one, although we have far more detail on the buffer beam than this old Triang Hornby one. And there's a number of people have pointed out this is possibly leftover stock or using the same tool to make the, the tender base as an old Hornby 00 model. Detailing on the side of this 
this new tender from Hormuz Railways is almost identical. I think it's been copied, possibly scaled down, as I said earlier, but it's very similar to the, the earlier version. However, the underframe detail is completely different and far superior. This older one, as we said, possibly from the old Hornby 00 days, a part, a, a part left over and reused. So you can see the detail between the two tenders, it's almost identical, apart from this rather crude screw drop straight through the top there. So it seems odd that it requires two securing screws to hold this quite lightweight tender top on. I'm not going to dismantle this model today, but the chassis on this model seems to be held in, in a very similar manner to the Triang Hornby one we looked at last week. I'll include a link to that video in the description box if you want to go and have a look at that model in slightly more detail. See so we've got these wonderful plated wheels and the centre ones are almost flanged but they're, they're quite reduced. I suppose that's to aid compatibility with tight radius curves on, on model railways. So moving along there, we've got that truck at the end. We've got that connection between the main part of the locomotive and the tender there. So we get current to the motor installed in that tender there. And there we see, strangely, we only have traction tyres on the one side. I think that's quite odd. And I think we should have had traction tyres on both sides like we did on, on the Evening Star. And there we've got that later variant of the, the Triumph Hornby cup in there in plastic, just held to the tender base with a, a flathead screw. So it really does seem a shame that this has been designed like this and we've lost the traction tyres on the tender. So it really could have been better designed. A little bit of thought and we could have had all the pickups from here and here, possibly on here and possibly on, on the front bogey here as well. This would have given us a, a much better model and much better pulling power. So a bit of a shame really. With the tender top off there, we can see those two great big weights there, which really do help with the traction and give it a great deal of pulling power, even though it does have only the two traction tyres. And there we've got a great view of the gears down the side of the motor. This setup was used in a large number of models over the years. We're going to bring her across to the outside line now, through points number seven there. We'll open those and smoothly through. Without that, very well behaved. And we'll switch those behind them. Brilliant shot that coming towards camera. Storming around that third radius curve. Effortlessly up the incline there. I suppose if you didn't know that was tender driving, you might believe that was being pulled by the locomotive. I'm not quite sure. And lovely there. Coming from the distance into the foreground across the bridge there. Starting to come down the incline, backing off the power a little, which is going to storm towards us now under those gantries, back into the curve underneath the incline section. Look at that, and we're going to bring her through two crossovers onto the passing loop and then back across the outside line onto the inside line. Really well behaved, and we'll close those points behind them. I did make a maroon version around this time in 1983, the King George VI, model number 767. She was available just for the one year, I think, but there were no coaches to go with it. Here we go, gentle stop at the station, and then we're going to leave those coaches behind and come beyond points number 11 here, and then we'll switch number 8, the crossover, take it back onto the outside line just by the diamond crossing there, switch the points and then we're going to open points 11 and we're going to bring out the Jinty from the sidings there at the station and collect these coaches and put them back in the station. Smoothly through the points through number 11, gentle stop and we'll switch those and we'll roll back and collect those coaches. I think we have those, and then we'll bring them forward, we'll get the whole lot beyond points number 11, effortless there, that magnesium, no trouble at all pulling these coaches, Gian can stop there, and we'll open number 11 again, and we'll roll back into the station there, 
Now I think that's about it this week. I'm going to leave you with page six from the 1971 catalogue where this bright red jinty first appeared alongside the original Trying Hornby Coronation locomotive there. I think if you look back again next week, we'll have something else from this late Trying Hornby period. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.